What if I told you there is a place where weary RV travelers can stop overnight for free? And no, I'm not talking about Walmart parking lots. I'm talking about a park that includes a dump station with fresh potable water and best of all, 30 amp and 50 amp service. Oh, and did I mention that it's free? What about free did you not understand? Well, it would be very nice if you left a donation in the donation box to help the community maintain this park. And we are in Dumas, or should I say Dumas, Texas. I've heard two pronunciations and haven't talked to a local yet. So I'm going to go with Duma. Sounds kind of French. <laughs> Coming from Oklahoma, pass through Beaver and Hooker to head south towards the home of the Ding Dong Daddy. There is a city park called the Texoma Park and they have a large parking area where you could fit just about any size RV. You got the big fifth wheel, you got the big motor home, come on. And they have a certain number of electrical connections. Each connection post has a 30 amp output and a 50 amp. So if you show up and let's say you use 30 amp and someone has already taken the 30 amp, then you're gonna be on the 50 amp. So you always need to have your dog bone, do you not? I'm talking about your 30 amp to 50 amp dog bone and your 50 amp to 30 amp dog bone. And speaking of dog bones, this park not only has a nice play area for children with a little playground set up, there's a little pet park where Fido can run and play and yes, poop and presumably tinkle on the two thoughtfully included fire hydrants. You probably need to have a dog with you if you're gonna go in the dog park and run around and interact with those fire hydrants. I'm just saying, might be a little strange if you go in there without a dog. Humans can tinkle in the park's bathrooms, which may or may not be open depending upon the pandemic. Now the park is kinda out here a little ways from the center of town. You'll never confuse this location with Yosemite. It's in an industrial area right next to some train tracks. Train does roll through from time to time. And yes, those trains keep a rolling all night long. But who can complain, really? You want to drop your anchor for a while, plug in some electricity, courtesy of the fine residents of this community, then you can do so. There are a couple of restrictions. No dogs allowed on the children's playground, I'm afraid. Sorry, dogs. And you're only allowed to stay here for 24 hours. Uh, quite understandable rule, because I'm sure there are some people who would set up shop here and never leave. <laughs> so it's really great. And I really wish more communities around our country would set up this kind of park. For you Elon Musks of RV travel out there, what if we had places like this scattered around North America where you could pull up pretty much any time of day, maybe you've got a little credit card slot by the electrical hookup or the dump station or even a gate to get in the park, however you work it out. So you pay a reasonable small fee and you can stay for 24 hours. You see, I love that aspect of things because the way we travel, I honestly just do not like early checkout times. Sorry, I know some of you love waking up to the bugle call at 5 a.m. We're not that way. We tend to meander when we travel with our Airstream and we really appreciate any kind of place where we can stay and linger and travel at our own pace, which is what I think RV travel is all about, personally. So my hat is off to this town, Duma, Texas. It's good karma to chip in to the kitty and spend a little money while you're here in the city. The grid has its benefits. 
But suppose you'd prefer getting some free electricity off the grid, where the air is cool and dry and the sky is sunny. How about this campsite? Last night we camped in this dispersed camping area on Bureau of Land Management land in Colorado. This is along Lake Como Road, and behind me you will see Sacred White Shell Mountain. In this federal land, there are many different places where you can pull off and just camp with your RV or with a tent or whatever. There are both individual campsites, and those might get snatched up, and there are also these larger parking areas where a lot of different campers can set up for the night. Towards evening, more and more people will roll in, people who may be passing through or are currently out exploring the nearby parks, especially Great Sand Dunes National Park. This free dispersed camping is located just a few miles away from the spectacular Great Sand Dunes National Park. Here you'll find the tallest sand dunes in North America. This is truly off the grid and with a good solar setup, especially if you are in areas of the country where the air is cool and dry and you don't need air conditioning to be comfortable, then solar is a wonderful investment. We'll talk more about our solar setup in the future. We really love campsites like this one, where you can just drive along this federal land, pick a spot, and set up for the night. You can tell how quiet it is out here right now. I can look out to the horizon and see no substantial development, no town. I think the closest town is 15 miles away or so. Getting out here was a little bumpy, shall we say. It's kind of a washboard road, so you're just bouncing up and down constantly on your way out here, and, and so the inside of your trailer gets a good thorough shaking, and the road deteriorates the farther you get up the mountain. We found this site first by looking at Campendium, and in Campendium, you can read reviews of these different sites and you can learn about, for example, the road conditions and what it's gonna be like to get there. Secondly, we were talking to a park ranger yesterday in Great Sand Dunes National Park and the ranger tipped us off to this particular location. So we came in here last night, right around sundown, had a wonderful evening. This is the type of place you could just set up, relax for a few days if you want. We actually met a couple uh, from Texas who are members of Loloho Nation this morning. They came up here from Texas and I believe they said they had been here for the last three or four days because it's just such a pleasant place to camp. But if you use Campendium, you can get some reviews of these places beforehand and learn about road conditions and so forth. So we've just been hanging out. It's a perfect place just to chill, get a little work done, cook some hamburgers, and just enjoy the great outdoors. RV travel in the year 2020. <laughs> yeah, there have been a few weird quirks. We all know there are some strange things that happen these days when you go into shop in different parts of the country. Welcome to Bizarro Mart. I gotta say, one-way shopping aisles are the most ridiculous example of groupthink that I've seen in a long time. When you want people to practice social distancing, why would you force them together in one same direction? Wouldn't it be better for social distancing if people could freely choose which direction to walk down the shopping aisle so they can avoid other customers? So this aisle is one way. This aisle is two way. This area over here is just a complete free for all. It's madness. You can walk any direction you want. It makes zero sense. Shh. More madness. People walking in every direction. You just went the wrong way down a one-way shopping aisle, ma'am. 
you are living dangerously. Now here, it's just another wild free-for-all. It's madness. So it's one-way shopping here. And over here, it's apparently the barefoot area. But if you put aside some of the pandemic weirdness, getting out on the road with our Airstream has been so wonderful. We're in this situation now in this country where everybody's consuming a lot of media and social media. Tequila. And a lot of it is rather negative yeah. and it puts us in a negative frame of mind. It has been wonderful to get out on the road and travel around and see that America is still a wonderful place to be. Spinach enchiladas, because I believe in eating my vegetables. And I especially love getting to states like this where you can just exist off the grid and relax. Until next time, as always, thank you guys for tuning in. This has been yet another episode of Long Long Honeymoon, the longest continuously running RV channel on the interwebs. This channel was created on YouTube in 2006. We've been doing this for quite a while and every year brings new adventures and new surprises. So thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate you watching our videos and supporting our channel. Until next time, Lolo ho. We also navigated here using our Garmin RV890 GPS, which has been doing a pretty good job navigating us along this trip. It hasn't steered us over a cliff yet. I will knock gently on this tree. See that? Can't you hear me knocking? That was an old Stone song.